They said, you can raise my taxes one to two to three percent. They said this in a poll. The Negroes raised it 0.50 percent. But you still got failing schools. You got jails that's messed up. You got the Amalam service messed up. Because they don't know what to ask for. You know what I mean? You know, they don't know. You got, and, and that's one thing you do. Now, you're running now. You're running. You just, don't be like... Don't be like the Trump. Once you win, you gotta know what to do now. You can't be, you can't be running and you're supposed to be governing. You gotta know that you want this, that, you want this change and know what you, what you want to do. Just because you don't vote for something, you can't follow somebody's lead because you, you just as bad as the person you let. You gotta know what you wanna do once you get in there. You know what I mean? It's things that people been there before, because like you were talking about, we got that in Maryland. We got a guy, is a, is a, is a president of the Senate. His father got a liquor store slash meat, meat house. Mike Miller, his store is BK Miller's. Negroes running that store like roaches in the projects. Guess what he made deal out? He got the deal with MGM where he was supplying all the liquor. Now think about what I just said. And then Vegas liquor is free. There you can be gambling, but you're gonna pay six dollars. Just think about that money. I told you they made 141 million in March, just in March. They ain't been open but in December. You know what I mean? But he controls everything as far as the Democratic side. It's a guy, state senator. He be talking to you right now, and he forget what room he in. He resigned. They wanted his wife to take over. His wife didn't have the votes on the state committee, the Democratic State Committee. He made that man <laughs> resent his resume. This man is walking around there, see now. This is no lie. I'm, I'm not making stuff up. This is the truth. You know, we had a sister. I'll tell you how tricky it is. We had a sister, Donna Edwards, she was a congresswoman, running for Senate, U.S. Senate. The boy Van Hollen got black folks in the black caucus to do commercials against, along with Obama. Tell you how crazy stuff is. Y'all got to listen to how crazy stuff is. We got Cardin Van Hollen, Cardin is a senator, McCoskey is a senator, and she's supposed to be woman's right, but she didn't support this woman, but anyway. Remember when Netanyahu came to talk before the Congress? Cardin was there, Van Hollen was there. Donna Edwards is supporting the president. She told me this out of her mouth. She did not go. She said the Jewish donors in Maryland call her and say, we will not support you because you didn't go to that, you didn't go to that session. This is how crazy stuff is. You know, she was supporting Obama, not coming to the meeting, because no ever, no uh, prime minister ever did that before. And they told her that, you know what I mean? You know, this is how crazy stuff is out here. And like I told, I don't know if I told y'all a day or yesterday, or we said it this morning, it's just like we got guys, we got municipalities that are rejecting Baltimore City, um, uh, Montgomery County, which is, is a rich county in Prince Georgia, but they have a black county exec, vetoed the minimum wage. We had a a delegate introduced the basically the uh, in the in the in the house to a law that says only the state could authorize a minimum raise increase in municipalities. Now, like I said, down in North Carolina, Dr. Bob the head of the NAACP, that's what the what that bathroom bill is talking about. 
That's what he's against. But you got up north, they're doing just the opposite. So you have to be able to do your homework, um, make sure you put together this. And like I said, on there, you, you read it when you get back home. It tells you what you need to put a campaign committee together, things like that. If you need more, like I got told the chairman, I'm available um, for uh, where people need some help in any way I can. If I can't, if I don't know it, I'll find it some kind of way. You know what I mean? Because I, like I said, um, I'm just trying to help because you got a lot of people. And then once you get a lot of money, let me say this, and Mr. Byron know this. People will start recommending. Let me let me go back a little bit. I majored in political science. Nobody can tell me about my community. I get an argument with white folks. You, you, you tell me about somebody else, but don't tell me about black folks and what my, my, what my people. Don't tell me how to do nothing in my community because you get this thing about frequent voters mess. Don't get fooled by that stuff. You know, people are not frequent voters because there's nothing resonating to them to go out to vote. You know what I mean? And, and you have to be able to say you control what the vote is and know what's going on in your neighborhood. You know what I mean? And, and that's one thing that I was able to do. But like I said, now, one of the things in campaigns, you get, I mean, a lot of these, these white guys, I mean, black guys, they get white folks to run their campaigns. And all they figure they can do is uh, mail, radio spots, and if they do TV, and they won't even give the black radio stuff to black folks, you know what I mean? But you can do that, you know what I mean? And if you're gonna do radio, um, and you got a little bit of money, do the gospel stations. Because even now, I'ma just tell you, mama and grandmama listen to that gospel station. They, they on that gospel station and they hear your name. And you can, you know, when you do the, the do your radio spots and your announcements, you can also do it simultaneously where you got people out in the streets passing out literature and stuff, or even when you do your phone bang, so that you can have it, it's, it's like a hit. They got people, they got really got people out here. You know what I mean? And like I say, even if you don't, it's old, and y'all might know what I'm talking about with fat sound units, is putting something on the top of your car and tell people get out to vote. And you can do a, a videotape with your na name on it, going slow, down the street, so people with signs on the side of your car, so people know that you're running, you know what I mean? Those are the kind of things that you can do. And believe me, it, start, it started little like this. The Tea Party started with those little offices. The school board with five, 10% came out, and they, they started just like this, and they just worked and worked, you know, and, and one, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I have any questions. I hope I was helpful. Um, I think it was splendid. I really appreciate it. I think it was splendid. If you keep up, I'm going to start calling you Osa Tutu. <laughs> Ruin your reputation. Let the white folks know you're here. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I wanted to, you know, give just a few minutes, a half hour or so, for we can entertain some more discussion. We just have a panel up here to talk. And uh, you see your names up there. I don't, I don't know. If, please come up and just... Uh, just have some discussion briefly, uh, have access to all of these uh, incredible uh, forces. And let's spend a half hour or so uh, with whatever kinds of questions and issues that you feel like you might want to raise. Uh, and it's possible that some of the people who are up here um, might want to ask one of the comrades to elaborate on some point that they made uh, during their presentations. I think we'll do this again on tomorrow in terms of the panel discussion, but 
we just thought that this might be helpful and give people an opportunity uh, to raise some more issues, questions, and more general discussion if necessary. Let me move my stuff out of the way here. John, you So uh, I want to go ahead and open this up. Uh, and uh, there was so much that could be talked about uh, based on the presentation that we just heard, just like it has been with all of the presentations that we've heard uh, from these presenters. We haven't yet heard from John Dew. And I'm really sorry about that in so many ways. Uh, You'll be here tomorrow. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but you're on a panel now. And uh, John has an incredible history. And you'll find some of that in the package that you have, just some of the background. It's historic. That's why I want you to, to, to see it, because because this brother was uh, in the trenches at really critical moments in our history. We've talked about the Summer Project in Mississippi. We've talked about uh, people like Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh, we didn't speak so much about people like Bob Moses, who were sort of legendary uh, in the whole uh, struggle, particularly uh, with SNCC and some of the other uh, uh, important forces and times. Talked about King and other places where John was on the scene, on the spot in many of those cases, and uh, in extremely dangerous circumstances. And uh, I, I thought it was important for him to be here because he participated at critical moments when we were tussling with this whole question of electoral politics, registering people uh, to vote and stuff like that. In fact, when I met John, uh, uh, that's what, uh, you know, we worked to end up working together doing voter education and registration, and I worked in six counties uh, in northern Florida uh, under his leadership registering uh, uh, African voters. So, uh, and of course, you've heard from Charles Barron, and you know who he is and what his record is, and, and Glenn Ford, uh, who uh, <clears throat> there's much about him that has not been stated in terms of the critical pioneering work that he's done in terms of black communications, and, and uh, uh, particularly with radio, but not just radio. Glenn Ford actually uh, wrote for the Daily World uh, of the Communist Party USA. He uh, founded, uh, uh, he, fa <laughs> he founded uh, uh, communications uh, institutions, uh, and one of which he is now executive director for Black Agenda Report, which I think is one of the most important uh, institutions uh, that we have a possession of, and also uh, Glenn worked for and was named by James Brown. James Brown. <laughs> so uh, he worked in radio stations that was owned by James Brown in Georgia. Uh, so these are some incredible forces. They've got great history doing political work, and I want to throw it out to people. You've heard presentations from everybody except John. Uh, are there any questions, issues, uh, anything we would like to have uh, elaboration on, uh, et cetera, from anybody? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, my name is Columbae, and I am from Ferguson, Missouri area. And um, I just, first and foremost, just really want to appreciate this room. Like, um, you know, when Ferguson happened, I was not in political life at all. Probably the most political thing I did is go out and vote for Obama. Um, and then the second time he ran, um, I worked for a Jewish doctor that convinced me to help him with, this camp with, with the campaign. And so, um, you know, that's probably as far as my political life had been. And organizing, you know, I grew up in church and um, was called to the ministry at 17. So organizing in that way. Um, but I really appreciate the Uhura movement for coming into Ferguson um, and exposing me and helping me to understand by having a grand, black grand jury because that probably was the real key moment where I, I had an aha moment and really felt like, okay, I understand something that I didn't understand no more that I don't have power. And that's the struggle. And um, the first time I ever traveled was for the Black is Back Coalition. And this like this whole, everything that I heard has really 
deepen my understanding of what we doing, you know, this school and the information that has been given to me is so profound. Um, I, I, I wasn't here because we missed, we were the people who missed the flight twice. But um, <laughs> nevertheless, I was watching. Um, I was watching um, before I got here. And um, uh, I got to hear um, Zaki Baruti that is from St. Louis, my area. And I, and you know, I was listening to the whole 1%. And I think that it's right on that the 1% is because the people are not connected to this, the whole, like, they know that these people are neo-colonial setouts. So regardless of what you think, um, you know, if you, even when people are not political like myself, you still know when somebody for you and not. And um, I just really want to appreciate you, Charles um, Barron, for daring to say the bold stuff because a lot of times, especially in St. Louis, people are afraid or feel like they have to, um, you know, you know, sugarcoat things or just not even talk about the black issue at all, you know, and, um, you know, this is changing the game, you know, everything that we're doing and just really uniting with the chairman when he said that, you know, like this is a different period, you know, where um, a lot of times a lot of people thought, you know, the most radical thing, you know, can happen is, you know, some things that people said, but now it's different where you can say reparations and genocide and, you know, you can have these common conversations and these conversations wasn't happening. And so I would say that Black is Back as a coalition and the Uhuru movement did more than anybody ever did in Ferguson, mm. um, what you brought there. And that's, you know, right, raising me up to be a revolutionary, bringing the Black grand jury there and exposing the people to truth that is solid, you know, in, on the grounds in Ferguson. And I appreciate that. And it was a lot of money dumped there but they haven't did anything. Yeah. But the Hoover movement in the three years since that happened have raised up a, a, a group of young people and a, a movement in a real profound way and the Black is Back Coalition has a lot.